Up next is a tale of love, betrayal, and mistaken identity. The Goshen College Theater Department has been hard at work this semester on reimagining Shakespeare's Cymbeline into a radio play. Follow in Mohan as she takes fate into her own hands to reunite with her love. On this epic adventure, lies will be told and loyalties will be tested. But will love prevail in the end? Shakespeare pulls from a stockpile of his famous tropes and devices in this lesser-known work. Lindsay Nance is assistant director. Riley Bontrager, assistant foley designer. Beck Zare, foley assistant. Gloria Bontrager-Thomas, stage manager. Adam Hildegardner and Madison Schwarzenruber were assistant stage managers. For the actors, Emmy Roop plays the part of Cymbeline, Willa Byler, Imohan, and the Ghost Mother. Ben Reichenbach plays the parts of Clawton, Captain, and the Jailer. Laura Miller takes the part of the Queen. Beck Zare is Posthumus Leonatus and Ghost Father. Dali Rodriguez plays the part of Pisano. Cheyenne Harrison is Clawton Lord, Captain, and Jupiter. Alex Miller plays the parts of Cornelius, Clawton Lord, and Laurent. Tobias Garcia is Falerio. Caius Lucius, and Jupiter. Abigail Greaser plays the parts of Yakimo and Jupiter. And finally, Kara Wilson is Guy Darius. Stay tuned for Cymbeline Interrupted by William Shakespeare. Adapted and directed by Michelle Milne, this broadcast features original music by Lucas Thompson and a Foley design by Jacob Clausen. Hi. Hi. Hey. 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 Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. I'm great. How are you? I miss you both. It's so good to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It is. Do you know the story of Cymbeline? There was a time when no king frowned as much as she. Oh, what was the matter? She promised Imogen, her daughter, to Clotin, the son of the queen. The queen was a widow. Now Cymbeline's wife. And Imogen hath fallen for a poor but worthy love by the name of Posthumus. They wed. And Posthumus was banished. Oh, all this outward sorrow. Though I think Cymbeline be touched at very heart. Is Imogen the sole child of the king? There was one other who at three years old from their nursery was stolen. To this hour, no guess in knowledge which way they went. How long is this ago? Some 20 years. That a king's child should be so conveyed, so slackly guarded, and the search so slow that could not trace them? Howsoe'er, tis strange. Yet, it is true. Listen. 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 You shall not find me, daughter, after the slander of most stepmothers, evil-eyed unto you. For you, posthumous, so soon as I can win the offended king, I will be known your advocate. Twere good you leaned unto her sentence. Please, your highness, I will from hence today. I'll fetch a turn about the gardens, though the king hath charged you should not speak together. Oh, dissembling courtesy. How fine this tyrant the queen can tickle where she wounds. My dearest spouse, you must be gone, and I shall hereby abide the hourly shot of angry eyes, not comforted to live, but that there is this jewel in the world that I may see again. My love, my mistress, O oh, lady, weep no more. I will remain the loyalest spouse that did e'er plight troth. My residence in Rome, to the right, my love, and with mine eyes I'll drink the words you said. Hush, here comes the queen. Imogen, posthumous, be brief, I pray you. If the king come, I shall incur I know not how much of her displeasure. Yet... I'll move Cymbeline, the king, to walk this way and see them here together. 
Imogen, should it be taking leave as long a term as yet we have to live, the loathness to depart would grow. Adieu. Nay, posthumous, stay a little. This diamond was my mother's. Take it, heart, but keep it till you woo another wife. When I have left this world. How? How? Another? Gentle gods, give me but this I have. Remain, remain thou here. And sweetest, fairest, for my sake, take this bracelet. It is a manacle of love. I'll place it upon this fairest Imogen. Oh, the gods! When shall we see each other again? Alack, the king. Posthumous, thou basest thing, avoid hence from my sight. If after this command thou fraught the court with thy unworthiness, thou diest away, thou poison to my blood. Imogen, the gods protect you, and bless the good remainders of the court. I am gone. There cannot be a pinch in death more sharp than this. O oh, disloyal thing, that shouldst repair my youth, thou heaps the year's age on me. I beseech you, mother, king, please, harm not yourself with your vexation. I am senseless of your wrath. Past grace, obedience. Past hope, and in despair that way, past grace. The mites have wed Clotin, the sole son of my queen. Oh, bless that I might not. I chose an eagle and did avoid a puttock. Thou took'st a beggar who wouldst have made my throne a seat for baseness. No, they rather added a luster to it. Oh, thou vile one. It is your fault that I have loved Posthumus. You bred them as my playfellow. They overbuy me almost the sum they pay. <laughs> what? Art thou mad? Oh, queen. Imogen and Posthumus were again together. You have not done after our command. Away with Imogen. Pen her up. Beseech your patience. Peace, dear lady daughter, peace. Sweet sovereign, leave us to ourselves. Nay. Let her languish, die of this folly. I do leave you to yourselves. Fie, Imogen, you must give way. Walk with me, let's speak a while. Oh, Bassanio, what news? The Lord Clotin. My son? Yes, madam, drew his sword on Posthumus. <laughs> no harm, I trust, is done. Your son drew upon an exile! There might have been some harm, but that they had rather played than fought. Then all is well. Pisania, why came you from Posthumus? On their command. They left these notes I should be subject to, when it pleased you to employ me. What was the last they spake to thee? They cried from ship, My queen! My queen! Then waved their handkerchief? And kissed it, madam. Senseless linen, happier therein than I. Then they did keep the deck, with handkerchiefs still waving, expressing how slow their soul sailed on, how swift the ship. I would have broke mine eye strings, cracked them, but to look upon my love till the shrinking of space had pointed them sharp as my needle. Nay, followed them, till they had melted from the smallness of a gnat to air, and then have turned mine eye and wept. Clotin, sir, I would advise you to shift a shirt. The violence of action hath made you reek. <laughs> Have I heard this posthumous? 
No, faith not so much as their patience. <laughs> Hurt? <laughs> Why, their body's a passable carcass. The villain would not stand me. No, but fled forward still toward your face. <laughs> I would they had not come between us. And that Imogen should love Posthumus and refuse me? Sir, as I told you always, her beauty and her brain go not together. She shines not upon fools, <laughs> lest the reflection should hurt her. <laughs> would there had been some hurt done. Uh, come, I'll to my chamber. I'll attend your lordship. And I as well, my lord. Britain, who is newly come to Rome? Speak you of posthumous. I've seen them in France. This matter of marrying Imogen, Cymbeline's daughter. And then their banishment? <laughs> their father and I were soldiers together. But look, they come here now. <laughs> I beseech you, Giacomo. <laughs> Laurent. Hello again. Be better known to this hey. gentle one, Posthumus, whom I commend to you as a noble friend. <laughs> My friend, Posthumus, we have known together in Orleans. Friend, since when I have been debtor to you for courtesies, which I will be ever to pay, yet pay still. <laughs> you orate my poor kindness. By your pardon, I was then a young traveler. My quarrel was not altogether slight. <laughs> Can we, uh, with manners, ask what was the quarrel? Each of us fell in praise of our country, and then our country mistresses. Hmm. This noble, at that time vouching theirs to be more fair, virtuous, wise, and chaste hmm. than any of uh, the rarest of our women in France. You must not so far prefer her for ours in Italy. Being so far provoked as I was in France, I would abate her nothing. <laughs> If she went before others I have seen, I could not but believe she excelled many. But I have not seen the most precious diamond, that is, nor you, the lady. I praised her as I rated her. So do I my ring. What do you esteem it at? <laughs> More than the world enjoys. <laughs> Either your unparagon mistress is dead, or she is outprized by a trifle. You are mistaken. <laughs> A jewel may be sold or given, but she is not a thing for sale, only a gift of the gods. Oh, which the gods have given you? Which, by their graces, I will keep. A strange foul light upon neighboring ponds. Your ring may be stolen, too. A cunning thief or an accomplished courtier would hazard the winning of both. Your Italy contains none so accomplished a courtier to convince the honor of my mistress Imogen. I fear not, my ring. Let us leave here, friends. With some conversation, I should get ground of your fair mistress, had I admittance and opportunity to friend. You are a great deal abused in too bold a persuasion. Gentles, enough of this. It came in too suddenly. Let it die as it was born. <laughs> Would I had put my estate on the approbation of what I have spoke? What lady would you choose to assail? Yours, whom in constancy you think stands so safe. I will lay you 10,000 ducats to your ring. Commend me to the court where your lady is, and I will bring from thence that honor of hers which you imagine so reserved. I will wage against your gold my ring. I hold dear as my finger. I will have it no lay. By the gods it is one. If I bring you no sufficient testimony that I have enjoyed the dearest bodily part of your mistress Imogen, my ten thousand ducats are yours. So is your diamond too. 
if I come off and leave her in such honor as you have trust in. She your jewel, this your jewel, and my gold are yours. I embrace these conditions. If you make your voyage upon her and give me directly to understand you have prevailed, I am no further your enemy. She is not worth our debate. <laughs> but if she remain unseduced, for the ill opinion and the assault you have made on her, you shall answer me with your sword. Your hand, a covenant, and straight away for Britain, lest the bargain should catch cold and starve. Agreed. Now, Mistress Doctor, have you brought those drugs? Please, if your highness, aye, here they are, madam, in this flask. But, I beseech your grace, without offense, my conscience bids me ask, wherefore you have commanded of me these most poisonous compounds, which are the movers of a languishing death? I wonder, Doctor, thou ask me such a question. Unless thou thinkst me devilish, I will try the forces of these thy compounds on such creatures as we count not worth the hanging, but none human. Your highness shall from this practice but make hard your heart. Oh, content thee. Here comes Pisanio, upon whom will I first work, servant to Posthumus and enemy to my son. How now, Pisanio? Doctor, your service for this time is ended. Take your own way. I do not like the queen. She doth think she has strange lingering poisons. I do know her spirit and would not trust one of her malice with a drug of such damned nature. Those I gave her will stupefy the sense a while, but there is no danger in what show of death it makes. She is fooled with a most false effect. Pisanio, thou sayest Imogen weeps still for Posthumus? She does. Dost thou think in time she will not quench and let instructions enter where folly now possesses? Do thou work. When thou shalt bring me word she loves my son, I'll tell thee on the instant thou art then as great as Posthumus, and greater yet. Uh, is this your flask? Thou takest up thou knowst not what, but take it for thy labor. It is a thing I made, which hath the king five times redeemed from death. I prithee, take it. It is an earnest of a further good that I mean to thee. Tell thy mistress how the case stands with her. Do it as from thyself. I'll move the king to any shape of thy preferment such as thou'lt desire. Think on my words. And shall do. But when to my good friends I prove untrue, I'll choke myself. There's all I'll do for you. A mother cruel and a stepdame false. My loved one banished. Oh, my supreme crown of grief. Had I been thief stolen as my sibling? Pappy! Pisanio, what news? Madam, here is a noble of Rome by name of Giacomo. Comes from your love with letters. Change you, Madam Imogen. The worthy posthumous is in safety and greets your highness dearly. Thanks, good friend. You're kindly welcome. All of her that is out of door most rich. If she be furnished with a mind so rare, I have lost the wager. Boldness be my friend. My love writes, this Giacomo is one of the noblest note to whose kindness as I am most infinitely tied. So far I have read aloud, but even the very middle of my heart is warmed by the rest of the letter. 
You are as welcome, worthy friend, as I have words to bid you. Thanks, fairest lady. And Posthumus's health, beseech you. Well, madam. Are they disposed to mirth? I hope they are. Exceeding pleasant. So merry and so gamesome, they are called the Briton Reveller. Uh, uh, when they were here, they did incline to sadness, and oft times not knowing why. I never saw them sad. There is a Frenchman, your love's companion, much loves a girl at home. He furnishes thick sighs, while posthumous, your love, laughs from free lungs, cries, Oh, can my sides hold to think one can by history report what woman is in free hours languishing for assured bondage. Will my sweet say so? I, madam, with eyes that flood with laughter. But heavens know some loves are much to blame. Not mine, I hope. Not yours. But yet heaven's bounty might be used more thankfully. Whilst I am bound to wonder, I am bound to pity, too. What do you pity? Two creatures, heartily. Am I one? Oof, lamentable. I pray you, friend, deliver with more openness your answers to my demands. Why do you pity me? <sighs> that... Others do... Uh, I was about to say... Enjoy your... Mm, but it is an office of the gods to venge it and not mine to speak on You do seem to know something of me or what concerns me. Pray you, tell me what both you spur and stop. Had I this cheek to bathe my lips upon... This hand, whose touch would force the feeler's soul to the oath of loyalty. Um. Oh, could I slaver with lips as common as the <laughs> stairs that mount the capital? Join hands with hands made hard with whorish um. labor? My love, I fear, has forgot Britain. And themselves. Let me hear no more. Oh, dearest soul, your cause doth strike my heart with pity that doth make me sick. A lady so fair to be partnered with strumpets. Oh, be revenged, or she that bore you was no king. Revenged? If this be true, how should I be revenged? Should your love make you live betwixt cold sheets whilst they are vaulting variable ramps? Revenge it. I dedicate myself to your sweet pleasure. Uh, what ho, Pisanio? Uh, let me my service tender to your lips. Uh, away! I do condemn mine ears that have so long attended thee. Thou wrongst a gentle one who is as far from thy report as thou from honor, and solicits here myself that disdains both thee and the devil alike. What ho, Pisanio! <laughs> oh, happy posthumous! Oh, blessed live you long! Oh, give me your pardon, dear lady. I have spoke this to know if your affiance were deeply rooted, and shall bring a posthumous much joy. You make amends. Oh, be not angry, most mighty princess, that I have adventured to try your taking a false report. The love I bear posthumous made me to fan you thus. Huh. Pray, your pardon. All's well, friend. Take my power of the court for yours. My humble thanks. Oh! I had almost forgot uh, to entreat your grace, but in a small request. Pray, what is it? Uh, some dozen Romans of us and your love, posthumous, huh. ha have mingled sums to buy a present for the emperor, jewels of rich and exquisite form, their values great. May it please you to take them in protection? Willingly, and pawn mine honor for their safety. Since my love hath interest in them, I will keep them in my bedchamber. 
They are in a trunk. I will make bold to send them to you only for this night. I must aboard tomorrow. Away so soon? I must, madam. Therefore, I shall beseech you, if you please, to greet your love with writing. Do it tonight. I will write. Send your trunk to me. It shall be kept safe. to be hit away? I had a hundred pound on it. And then, a whore son jackanapes must take me up for swearing. Must he not buy that, Lord Clotten? You have broke his pate with your bowl. If his wit had been like him that broke it, it would have run all out. <laughs> whore son dog, I give him satisfaction? Would he had been one of my rank? To have smelt a fool. <laughs> I had rather not be so noble as I am. They dare not fight with me because of the queen my mother. I must go up and down like a cock that nobody can match. It is not fit your lordship to undertake every companion that you give offense to. I know that. But it is fit I should commit offense to my inferiors. Did you hear of a stranger that's come to court tonight? A stranger? And I not know on it? There's an Italian come by the name of Giacomo. Tis thought to be one of Posthumus's friends. Posthumus? A banished rascal. Come, I'll go see this Italian. What I have lost today at Bowles, I'll win tonight of him. to bed. Yakumo's trunk is safe by me. To your protection I commend me, gods, from the fairies and the tempters of the night. Guard me, beseech ye. Oh, 
And this will outwitness outwardly to the maddening of her love. On her left breast, a mole sink spotted. This secret will seem to prove I have picked the lock and tamed the treasure of her honor. No more. <laughs> to what end? I have enough. are the most patient man in loss. It would make any man cold to lose. You are most hot and furious when you win. Winning will put any man into courage. If I could get this foolish Imogen, I should have gold enough. It's almost morning, is it not? Day, my lord. I am advised to give her music a morning's. They say it will penetrate. Come on, tune, musicians. Ah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> hark, hark, the lark at heaven's gate sings. And Phoebus skins arise, his steeds to water at those springs, on chaliced flowers that lies, ahem, and winking merry buds begin to ope their golden eyes with everything that pretty is. My lady sweet, arise, arise. I am glad I was up so late, for that's the reason I was up so early. The king cannot choose but take this service I have done as care. Good morrow to your majesty. Attend you here the door of our stern daughter? Will she not forth? I have assailed her with music, but she vouchsafes no notice. The exile of her minion is too new. She has not yet forgotten. Some more time must wear the print of that remembrance out, and then she's yours. So please you, King, ambassadors from Rome. The one is Caius Lucius. A worthy fellow, albeit he comes on angry purpose now. But that's no fault of his. We must receive him according to the honor of his sender. Clotten, when you have given good morning to your mistress, attend the queen and us. I must go. If Imogen be up, I'll speak with her. If not, I'll let her lie still and dream. By your leave, ho! By your leave, Imogen, it's it's me, it's Clotten. Uh, we had a scheduling thing with, in the gardens this morning. Did Pisani tell you? Imogen?
Imogen, are you up? Imogen! Imogen, I know you are awake. Imogen, I will keep knocking until you come to this door. Come on! Imogen, my knuckles are What? Ah, oh, good morrow. Fairest. Good morrow, sir. I, I swear, I love you. If you swear still, your recompense is still that I regard it not. This is no answer. But that you shall not say I yield being silent, I would not speak. I pray you, spare me. One of your great knowing should learn forbearance. To leave you in your madness, twere my sin, I will not. Fools are not mad folks. Um, <clears throat> do you call me fool? As I am mad, I do. If you'll be patient, I'll no more be mad. That cures us both. I do here pronounce by the very truth of it, I care not for you. I hate you. You <sighs> sin against obedience, which you owe your mother, the king. For you are curbed by the consequence of the crown and must not soil the precious note of it with that base one posthumous. Profane fellow, wert thou the son of Jupiter, thou wert too base to be posthumous's groom. <laughs> the south fog rots posthumous. Their meanest garment that ever hath but clipped their body is dearer in my respect than all the hairs above thee. How now, Pisanio? Their garment, now the devil. Pisanio. To hell and my woman hide thee presently. Their garment. I am sprited with a fool. Frighted and angered worse. Go bid my woman search for a bracelet that too casually hath left mine arm. I do think I saw it this morning. Confident I am last night twas on mine arm. I, I kissed it. Twill not be lost. I hope so. Go and search. Their meanest garment? I, I said so. Oh, I will inform your mother. Your mother too. <laughs> She's my good lady and will conceive, I hope, but the worst of me. So I leave you, sir, to the worst of discontent. I'll be revenged. Oh, their meanest garment. Well. Fear it not, friend. I would I were so sure to win the king, as I am bold that Imogen's honor will remain hers. What means do you make to the king? Not any, but abide the change of time. Quake in the present winter state and wish that warmer days would come. In these seared hopes, I barely gratify your love. <laughs> your goodness and your company overpay is all I can do. By this, your king hath heard of great Augustus. Caius Lucius will do commissions thoroughly, and I think Cymbeline will grant the tribute. I do believe, statest though I am none, nor like to be, that this will prove a war. And you shall hear the legions now in Galia sooner landed and are not fearing Britain, than have tidings of any penny tribute paid. Hey! <laughs> See, Yakima returns from Britain. Welcome, friend. I hope the briefness of your answer made for the speediness of your return. Uh, your lady is one of the fairest that I have looked upon. And therewithal the best. Here are letters for you. They're tenor good, I trust. It is very like. All is well, yet. Sparkles this ring as it was wont, or it's not too dull for your good wearing. I'll make a journey twice as far to enjoy a second night of such sweet shortness which was mine in Britain. For the ring is won, your lady being so easy. Make not, sir, your loss, your sport. I hope you know that we must not continue friends. Oh, but so we must, if you keep covenant. I now profess myself the winner of her honor together with your ring. If you can make it apparent that you have tasted her in bed, 
my hand in ring is yours. If not, the foul opinion you had of her pure honor gains or loses your sword or mine. I will confirm with oath, though you shall find you need it not. First, her bedchamber, where I confess I slept not, was hanged with tapestry of silk and silver, the story of proud Cleopatra where she met her Roman. This is true, and this you might have heard of here by me or by some other. More particulars must justify my knowledge. The chimney is south of the chamber, and the chimney piece chased Diane bathing. The roof of the chamber with uh, golden cherubins is fretted. Her and Diamonds, oh, I had forgot, were two winking cupids. This is her honor. Let it be granted you have seen all this. The description of what is in her chamber, nothing saves the wager you have laid. Then, if you can, her bracelet. Be pale. I beg with leave to air this jewel. See? Jove, is it that which I sent with her? She stripped it from her arm. I see her yet. She gave it me and said she prized it once. Maybe she plucked it off to send it me. She writes so to you, doth she? Oh, no, no, no. Tis true. Here, take this ring. It is a basilisk unto mine eye. Kills me to look on it. Oh, above measure false. Have patience, friend, and take your ring again. Tis not yet won. It may be probable she lost it, or who knows if one of her servants, being corrupted, hath stolen it from her. Very true. Back my ring. Render to me some corporal sign about her, more evident than this, for the bracelet was stolen. By Jupiter, I had it from her arm. Hark you, he swears. By Jupiter, he swears. Tis true. Nay, keep the ring. Tis true. I am sure she would not lose it. No, he hast enjoyed her. Friend, be patient. This is not strong enough to be believed. If you seek for further satisfy, upon her breast lies a mole. I kissed it. Uh, you do remember this stain upon her? Aye, and it doth confirm another stain, as big as hell can hold. Oh, that I had her here to tear her limb meal. I will go there and do it in the court. I'll do something. Yakimo? You have won. We are all bastards. And that most venerable man which I did call my father was I know not where when I was stamped. Oh, vengeance, vengeance! I thought Imogen has chased his unsung snow. Oh, all oh, the devils! This yellow Yakimo in an hour found no opposition but what he looked for. Could I find out the woman's part in me? Vice is the woman's part. Be it lying, note it, hers. Flattering hers, deceiving hers, covetings, change of pride, disdain, slanders, mutability, all faults that may be named. Nay, the hell knows by hers in part or all, but rather all. For even to vice, they are not constant, but are changing. Still, I detest them, curse them. The very devils could not plague them better.
Caius Lucius, tell us, what would Augustus Caesar with us? When Julius Caesar was in this Britain and conquered it, thine uncle granted Rome a tribute, nearly 3,000 pounds, which by thee lately is left untendered. And shall be so, ever. Son, let me answer. Why should we pay tribute if Caesar can hide the sun from us with a blanket or put the moon in his pocket? We will pay him tribute for light. Else, sir, no more tribute, pray you now. Clotin, hold your peace. Caius, you must know, till the injurious Romans did exhort this tribute from us, we were free. Caesar's ambition, which swelled so much that it did almost stretch the sides of the world, did put the yoke upon, which to shake off becomes a warlike people whom we reckon ourselves to be. Say then to Caesar, our ancestors ordained our laws. Caesar hath too much mangled them. Their repair and franchise shall, by the power we hold, be our good deed. Though Rome be therefore angry. I am sorry, Cymbeline, that I am to pronounce Augustus Caesar thine enemy. Receive it from me, then, war and confusion. In Caesar's name pronounced I against thee, look for fury not to be resisted. for her, but the one for me. What means that letter they wrote to me? Adultery? Imogen? Posthumous! Oh! What false Italian hath prevailed on thy too ready hearing? How? That I should murder Imogen? I, her? Her blood? How now, Pisanio? Madam, here is a letter you should read. What? A letter from my love? Posthumous? They write to me, O oh, dearest of creatures, take notice that I am in Cambria at Milford Haven. What your own love will out of this advise you. Follow! Oh, for a horse with wings! Hearest thou, Pisonio? They are at Milford Haven. <gasps> read! and tell me how far tis thither. If one of mean affairs may plot it in a week, why may not I glide thither in a day? Then, true Pisanio, who longst like me to see thy noble, longst, but not like me, yet longst, but in a fainter kind, oh, not like me, for mine's beyond, beyond, say and speak thick, how we may steal from hence. But first, how get hence? Prithee, speak. How many score of miles may well we ride twixt hour and hour? One score twixt sun and sun. Why, one that rode to his execution could never go so slow. But this is foolery. Go and provide me presently a riding suit. Madam, your best consider. There's no more to say. Accessible is none but Milford Way. A goodly day not to keep house. This gate instructs me how to adore the heavens. Hail thou, fair heaven. My mother told me tales of court, of princes, of the tricks in war. But I've never winged from view o' the nest. Happily, this life is sweeter to those that have seen the court. But unto me, 
It is a cell of ignorance. I have nothing. My valor is to chase what flies. My cage I make acquire as doth a prison bird and sing my bondage freely. Cymbeline loved my mother as a sister when a soldier was a theme. But in one night, two villains whose false oaths prevailed swore to Cymbeline, my mother Valerius was confederate with the Romans, so followed her banishment with me, her child. Since her death, I've wandered alone. But this is not Hunter's language. Up to the mountains to hunt. Pisanio, thou toldst me when we came from horse the place was near at hand. But friend, where is Posthumus? What is in thy mind that makes thee stare thus? Please, you, read this letter. From Posthumus, the letter reads, Thy mistress, Pisanio, hath played the strumpet in my bed. Pisanio, act for me. Let thine own hands take away her life. I shall give thee opportunity at Milford Haven. What shall I need to draw my sword? The paper hath cut her throat already. False to their bed. What is it to be false? To lie and watch there and to think on them and cry myself awake? That's false to their bed, is it? Alas, good lady. I false. Some jay of Italy hath betrayed them. Oh, loved ones' vows are but our traitors. Good madam, hear me. Come, Pisanio, do thou this letter's bidding. Look, I draw the sword myself. Take it and hit my heart. Do their bidding. Strike. Hence, vile instrument. Thou shalt not damn my hand. Why, I must die. Come, here's my heart. Oh, gracious lady, since I received command to do this business, I have not slept one wink. Do it, and to bed then. I'll wake mine eyeballs blind first. Wherefore then didst undertake it? Why hast thou abused so many miles with a pretense? But to win time. Please, you friend, hear me with patience. I thought you would not back again. Most like, bringing me here to kill me. Not so, neither. It cannot be but that thy love's abused. I'll give but notice you are dead, and send posthumous some bloody sign of it. But what shall I do the where? Where bide, how live? Or in my life, what comfort when I am dead to my spouse? Caius Lucius comes to Milford Haven tomorrow. Now, if you could disguise yourself, you should tread a course near the residence of posthumous. Oh, for such means I would adventure. Well then. Here's the point. You must forget to be a woman. Make yourself but like a man. For thinking this, I have in my bag the garments you will need. For Caius Lucius, present yourself. Desire his service. Thou art all the comfort the gods will die at me with. This attempt I am soldier to, and I will abide it with a prince's courage. Well, madam, we must take a short farewell. Lest being missed, I be suspected of your carriage from the court. Here is a flask. I had it from the queen. If you're sick, a dram of this will drive away distemper. To some shade, and dress you to your manhood. May the gods direct you to the best. Amen, Pisanio. I thank thee. Thank you.
My gentle queen, where is our daughter? She looks us like a thing more made of malice than of duty. We have noted it. Since the exile of Posthumus, most retired hath her life been. The cure whereof, my king, tis time must do. Beseech your majesty, forbear sharp speeches to her. She's a lady, so tender of rebuke that words are strokes, and strokes death to her. Blotten, where is my daughter? Please, your majesty, her chambers are all locked, and there's no answer that will be given to the loudest noise we make. Her, her door's locked. No answer at all. Grant heavens that which I fear prove false. Son, I say follow the king. Aye, madam. Where is Imogen gone? Haply she's flown to her desired posthumous. Gone she is, to death or to dishonor, and my end can make good use of either. She being down, I have the placing of the British crown. Madam, tis certain Imogen is fled. Go in and cheer the king. She rages, none dare come about her. All the better. May this night forestall her of the coming day. Oh, Imogen. I love and hate her, for she's fair and royal, and that she hath all courtly parts more exquisite than lady, ladies, woman. From every one the best she hath, and she, of all compounded, outsells them all. I love her, therefore. But disdaining me, and throwing favors on the low posthumous slanders, so her judgment that what's else rare is choked. And in that point, I will conclude to hate her. Nay, indeed, to be revenged upon her. For when fools shall... Who is here? Oh. Come hither. Ah, you, precious pander, Pisanio, villain, where is thy lady? Ah, uh, good, my lord. Where is thy lady? Or by Jupiter, I will not ask again. Close, villain. I'll have this secret from thy heart, or rip thy heart to find it. Is she with Posthumus? Alas, my lord, how can she be with them? They are in Rome. Where is she? Oh, my all-worthy lord. All-worthy villain. Discover where thy mistress is at once. This letter is the history of my knowledge, touching her flight. Let's see it. I will pursue her even to Augustus's throne. She's far enough, and what he learns by this may prove his travail, not her danger. Um, meet me at Milford Haven. Posthumous. Uh, is this letter true? Yes, as I think. It is Posthumous's hand. I know it. If thou wouldst not be a villain, but do me true service, I would think thee an honest servant. Well, my good lord. Uh, wilt thou serve me? For since patiently and constantly thou hast stuck to the bare fortune of that beggar posthumous, thou canst not but be a diligent follower of mine. Wilt thou serve me? Sir, I will. Uh, hast any of thy noble's garments in thy possession? I have, my lord. The first service thou dost me, fetch that garment hither. I shall, my lord. Meet thee at Milford Haven? <laughs> <laughs> Even there, thou villain posthumous, will I kill thee. Why would these garments were come? Imogen said upon a time, the bitterness of it I now belch from my heart, that she held the very garment of posthumous in more respect than my noble and natural person. Oh, with that garment upon my back, will I ravish 
her. First, kill Posthumus, and in the eyes of Imogen, there shall she see my valor. I will execute in the clothes that she so praised. Then to court, I'll knock her back, foot her home again. She hath despised me rejoicingly, and I'll be merry in my revenge. I see a man's life is a tedious one. I have tired myself and for two nights have made the ground my bed. My dear Posthumus, when I do think on thee, my hunger is gone. But what's this? Tis some savage hold, a cave. I were best not to call. I dared not call. Yet famine makes me valiant. Ho! Who's here? Ho? No answer? Then I'll enter. Peace be here, poor house that keeps thyself. I am weak with toil, yet strong in appetite. There is cold meat in the cave. I'll browse on that. Whoa! By Jupiter, an angel! Good, gentle, harm me not. Before I entered here, I called and thought to have begged or bought what I have took. I have stolen not, nor would not, though I had found gold strewed the floor. Here's money for my meat. Money, youth, all gold and silver rather turn to dirt. I see you're angry. No, if you kill me for my fault, I should have died had I not made it. Whither bound? To Milford Haven. What's your name? Fidele. Prithee, fair youth, think me no churl, nor measure my good mind by this rude place I live. Tis almost night. I bid you welcome. Be sprightly, for you found a friend. Then, friend, I thank you. Come in and sup. The night to the owl and morn to the lark less welcome. Great men that had a court no bigger than this cave could not outpeer this one. Pardon me, gods. I'd change my life to stay with them since posthumous is false. I am near to the place where they should meet if Pisanio have mapped it truly. How fit Posthumus's garments serve me. I dare speak it to myself, for it is not vain glory for a man and his glass to confer in his own chamber. I mean, the lines of my body are as well drawn as any. <laughs> Posthumus, Thy head, which is now growing upon thy shoulders, shall within this hour be off. <laughs> thy mistress enforced thy garments cut to pieces before thy face. And all this done, spurn her home to her mother, who may haply be a little angry for my so rough usage. But my mother shall turn all into my commendations. Out, sword and to a sore purpose.
not well. Remain here in the cave. I'll come to you after hunting. Are we not family? So we should be. I am very sick. I'll abide by you. So please you, leave me. I am ill, but your being by me cannot amend me. Pray you, trust me here. I love thee. How much the quantity, the weight as much as I would love my brother. <laughs> Sister, farewell. I wish ye sport. Your health so please you. I'll not be long away. Well or ill, I am bound to you. And shall be ever. This is a kind creature, sister-like. But I am sick still, heart-sick. Pisanio, I'll now taste of thy drug. It is great morning. Who's there? Soft, what are you? Some villain mountaineer? Thou art a robber, a lawbreaker, a villain. Yield thee, thief. To who? To thee? What art thou? Why should I yield to thee? Thou villain base! Knowst me not by my clothes? No! Nor thy tailor, rascal. What's thy name? Clotten, thou villain. Oh, Clotten, thou double villain, be thy name. I cannot tremble at it. Were it toad, or adder, or spider, t'would move me sooner. <laughs> thou shalt know I am son to the queen. Oh, I'm sorry for it not seeming so worthy as thy birth. Art thou not afeard? Those I reverence, those I fear. The wise, at fools, oh. I laugh, oh. not fear them. Hmm. Die the death. When I have slain thee with my <laughs> proper hand, I'll follow those that even now fled hence. Ah! <laughs> This Clotin was a fool, an empty purse. There was no money in it. I've cut off one Clotin's head, son to the queen, after his own report, who called me traitor. The law protects not me. Then why should I be tender to let an arrogant piece of flesh threat me, play judge and executioner all himself? With his sword, which he did wave against my throat, I obtained his head from him. I'll throw it into the creek behind our rock and let it to the sea and tell the fishes he's the queen's son, Clotin. Now, where's my brother? Oh! The bird is dead. If he be gone, He'll make his grave a bed with fairest flowers. While summer lasts, and I live here for Delhi, I'll sweeten thy sad grave. I'll bury him here by my mother and sing him to the ground. Fear no more the heat of 
the sun, nor the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hast done, home art gone, and tain thy wages. Grief, I see for Claudin, he was a queen's son. And though I took his life, I'll bury him as prince. Here next to Fidele, I'll make his grave. Fear no more the lightning flash, nor the all. Thunderstorm. All lovers young, all lovers must consign to thee and come to dust. Quiet consummation have and renown. Here's a few flowers. The ground that gave them first has them again. Their pleasures here passed. So was their pain. sister the dream's still here oh gods and goddesses am I awake a headless man the garments of posthumous murder in heaven how tis gone Pisanio conspired with that Devil Clotten, damned Pisanio hath with her forged letters. Oh, posthumous, where is thy head? How should this be? The drug Pisanio gave me, have I not found it murderous to the senses? That confirms it home. This is Pisanio's deed, and Clotin's. Oh, my love, posthumous, dead. <laughs> Soft, ho, oh, what man is here, dead or sleeping? But he's alive. Who is this thou makest thy bloody pillow? What's thy interest in this sad wreck? How came it? What art thou? I am nothing. This was my Maastrix. Alas, I may wander from east to west, try many, all good, sir, truly, never find such another Maastrix. Black good youth, what is your name? Fidele, sir. I am Caius Lucius, Roman general. Our troops are assembling. Will take thy chance with me? I will not say thou shalt be so well mastrixed, but be sure, no less beloved. Go with me. I'll follow you. But first, aunt, please the gods. I'll hide them from the flies. I, good youth, wipe thine eyes. Some falls are means the happier to arise.
the queen's not well. A fever with the absence of her son, a madness of which her life's in danger. Heavens, how deeply you at once do touch me! Imogen, the great part of my comfort gone. My queen upon a desperate bed and in a time when fearful wars point at me. Her son gone, so needful for this present. It strikes me past the hope of comfort. So please your majesty, the Roman legions, all from Gallia drawn, are landed on your coast. Oh, for the counsel of my son and queen. I am amazed with matter. Good, my liege, the want is but to put those powers in motion that long to move. I thank you. Let's withdraw and meet the time as it seeks us. The noise is round about me. What pleasure find I in life to lock it from action and adventure? What hope have I in hiding? I'll, I'll hire to the mountains, they're secure. But I am not known. What thing is it that I scarce ever looked on blood, but that of coward hares, hot goats, and venison? I am ashamed to look upon the holy sun and benefit from its blessed beings remaining so long a poor unknown. By heavens, I'll go to battle. Cassanio hath sent this bloody sign of death, a handkerchief covered in blood. Oh, Imogen. Oh, love. Oh, Cassanio. Every good servant does not all commands. No bonds, but two do just ones. God, if you should have taken vengeance on my faults, so had you saved the noble Imogen to repent and struck me, wretch, more worth your vengeance. I am brought hither among the Italian gentry and to fight against my lady's kingdom. Tis enough that Britain, I have killed thy mistress. Peace, I'll give no wound to thee. I'll disrobe me of these Italian weeds and suit myself as a Briton peasant. So I'll fight against the part I come with. So I'll die for thee, oh, Imogen, even for whom my life is every breath a death. And thus unknown, pitied, nor hated, to the face of peril, myself I'll dedicate. God, put the strength of the Leonati in me. Stand and fight! 
away from the troops and save thyself. For friends kill friends, and this sword is such as war were hoodwinked. All was, was lost. lost, but that the heavens fought. The king was of her wings destitute. The army broken, the enemy full hearted. When all at once a peasant soldier athwart the lane, and more like to run the country base than to commit such slaughter, made good the passage, cried to those that fled, stand, stand. Then began a rout, confusion thick. Forthwith they fly, heavens how they wound. Some slain before, some dying, some their friends. And are now each one, one the cause of slaughtering twenty. 20. There was a third, an unknown British soldier, made the affront with them. That was I, I, and my own woe charm. Could not find death where I did hear it groan, nor feel it where it struck. Well, I will yet find death, for I have resumed my previous part. Fight I will no more. For me, my ransom's death. On either side, I come to spend my breath, and end it by some means for Imogen. Stand! Who's there? A Roman. Lay hands on them. A leg of Rome shall not return to tell. Bring them to the king. <laughs> Most welcome, bondage. Death, who is the key to unbar these locks? My conscience, thou art fettered more than my shanks and wrists. Is enough, I am sorry. Must I repent? I cannot do it better than in chains. For Imogen's dear life, take mine and cancel these cold bonds. Imogen, speak to me in silence. Posthumous, you bring us to your dreams. Hath my poor child done aught but well? whose face I never saw. From my home was posthumous ripped, came crying amongst their foes. With marriage, wherefore were you mocked? To be exiled from sweet Imogen. Why did you suffer Iacomo with needless jealousy? Since Jupiter, our child is good. Take off their miseries. Help, Jupiter. For we appeal and from thy justice fly. No more, you petty spirits of region low, be content. Your lowly child I will uplift, and so away, no further with your incessant impatience, lest your stir up mine. To my palace crystalline. Sleep, thou hast begot a father and a mother to me, but gone. They went hence as soon as they were born. So I am awake. Poor wretches that depend on greatness's favor dream as I have done. <clears throat> Come, are you ready for death? <laughs> Over-roasted, rather. Ready long ago. <laughs> A heavy reckoning for you, prisoner. 
but the comfort is, uh, you shall be called to no more payments, fear no more tavern uh -huh. bills, which uh, are often the sadness of parting, as the procuring of men. <laughs> I am merrier to die than thou art to live. Knock off their manacles. Bring your prisoner to the king. Thou bringst good news. I am called to be made free. Stand by my side, you whom the gods have made preserver of my throne. To boast were neither true nor modest, unless I add I am honest. Woe is my heart that the poor soldier that so richly fought cannot be found. We have searched among the dead and living, but no trace of them. To my grief I am the heir of their reward. Tis now the time to ask of whence you are. Report it. In Cambria was I born. I will fit you with dignities becoming your estates. Mr. Stockter, there's business in your face. Why so sadly greet you our victory? Hail, great king. To sour your happiness, I must report the queen is dead. Uh, how ended she? With horror, madly dying, like her life, which being cruel to the world, can Included most cruel to herself. She confessed she never loved you, only affected greatness got by you. Your daughter, whom she bore in hand to love, she did confess, was a scorpion to her sight, whose life, but that her flight prevented it, she had ta'en off by poison. Oh, most delicate fiend! Mine eyes were not in fault, for she was beautiful. Mine ears that heard her flattery, nor my heart thought her like her seeming. It had been vicious to have mistrusted her, yet, oh, my daughter, heaven mend all. Thou comest not, Caius, now for tribute that the Britons have raised out. Consider the chance of war. The day was yours by accident, but since the gods will have it thus, this one thing only I will entreat, this boy, a Briton born. Let him be ransomed. He is a page so kind, so duteous, diligent, so tender. He hath done no Briton harm. Save him, if you will. His favor is familiar to me. Boy, thou hast looked thyself into my grace, and art mine own. I humbly thank your highness. What's thy name? Fidele, your grace. Is not this boy revived from death? Come, stand thou here, and ask what boon thou wilt. My boon is that this gentleman may render of whom he had this ring. What's that to him? That diamond upon your finger, say, how came it yours? By villainy I got this wing. <laughs> Twas posthumous jewel, whom thou didst banish, whereupon methinks I see them now. Aye, so thou dost. Aye, me, most credulous fool. Egregious murderer, thief! Oh, give me cord, or knife, or poison, some upright justice, sir. I am posthumous, that killed thy daughter. Spit, and throw stones, cast mire upon me. Every villain be called posthumous. Oh, Imogen, my queen, my life, my spouse. 
peace, peace, and here I... The scornful page! <laughs> ah! Oh, posthumous! You never killed Imogen till now! Help! Help! My honored lady! Does the world go round? How come these staggers on me? Wake and live, dear lady! Oh, get thee from my sight! Thou gavest me poison! The tune of Imogen! The gods throw stones of sulfur on me if that flask I gave you was not a precious thing. I had it from the queen. It poisoned me. Oh, gods! Her voice, tis Imogen. Oh, my love, thou livest. You dare pretend you love me. Sweet, I dare. Mountains of mortal guilt are now lifted from my breast. You may betray me twenty times oh. again. Again? And pray, when have I e'er betrayed you? I have the proofs. There stands your paramour, Yakimo. <laughs> my paramour! Uh, they know no better, madam. Posthumus and I made a wager that I should spend a night in your bedchamber. Posthumus, you made this wager? I did. He won it. How? He never came within my bedchamber. What? Uh, I spent a night there. It was the most uncomfortable night I ever passed. You must be mad, senor. I think, madam, you do forget the trunk. I forget nothing. At your earnest suit, your trunk was safely housed in my chamber. And I was in the trunk. I stole your bracelet while you slept. Well, you at least have grace to know yourself for what you are. My spouse thinks all is settled now, and this is a happy ending. What could I think? The fellow did describe the mole upon your breast. And thereupon you bade your servant kill me. Have I not told you that my guilty conscience had almost driven me mad when heaven opened and you appeared? But prithee, dearest one, how did you come to think that I was dead? It is too dreadful. I saw a headless man dressed in your clothes. That was Clotin. Son, he said, to the king. I cut off his head. Mary, the gods forfend! I have spoke it, and I did it. He was a prince. A most uncivil one. The wrongs he did me were nothing prince-like. I am sorry for thee. By thine own tongue thou art condemned, and must endure our law. Thou art dead. Stay, O king. This one is better than the man he slew, as well descended as thyself. How of descent as good as we? Thou hadst, great king, a subject who was called Valerius. Whatever. She is a banished traitor. Banished, but I know not how a traitor. You owe her for the caring of thy child. Caring of my child? Mighty king, this gentle one before you called Valerius mother, but is your issue. My liege, here is your child again. If this be they, I know not how to wish a worthier child. Guderius had upon their neck a mole. It was a mark of wonder. This is they, who have upon them still that natural stamp. Oh, what? Am I a mother to two again? Ne'er mother rejoice deliverance more. But Imogen, by finding elder sibling, thou hast lost by this a kingdom. This kingly business has no charm for me. When I lived in a cave, methought a palace must be a glorious place, peopled with those renowned as teachers, mightiest soldiers. But I will not be another Clotin, plagued by flatterers, not free to wed the person of my choice, stopped at every turn by those who cry, you must not, or you must. I abdicate and pass the throne to Imogen. Oh, my gentle friend, you called me brother when I was but your sister. Did you wear meat? Aye, my good lord, 
and at first meeting loved, it continued so until I thought he died. O oh, rare instinct, all o'erjoyed! My good Caius, I will yet do you service. Much thanks to you. The forlorn soldier that so nobly fought, they would have been well become this place, and graced the thinkings of a king. I am the soldier that did accompany Guderius in poor beseeming. Speak, Iacomo. I had you down and might have made you finish. I am down again. But now my heavy conscience sinks my knees as then your force did. Take my life, beseech you, uh, which so I dearly owe. Kneel not to me. The power that I have is but to spare you, to forgive you. Live and deal with others better. You forgive? Uh, but take your ring and bracelet too. I, I have returned them both to you. Give both to me. And I say too, live and deal with others better. Pardons the word to all. Posthumous. My love, why did you throw me from you? I take you in my arms. And I take you, dear Imogen. <laughs> Hang there like a fruit, my soul, till the tree die. <laughs> well, pardons the word to all. Publish we this piece to all our subjects. So through town march, and in the temple of great Jupiter, our peace will ratify. Seal it with feasts. Set on there. Never was a war did cease ere bloody hands were washed with such a peace. Thank you so much for listening to this broadcast of Symboline Interrupted, produced and performed by the Goshen College Theatre Department. For more information and cast production team, and to experience Symboline Interrupted as an interactive web adventure with video by Cheyenne Harrison, visit symboline.goshen.edu through December 6th. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Symboline Interrupted. <laughs>